know what we're talking about. Drake's Bay Oyster Company is being forced to shut down uh, as a result of turning a portion of the Point Reyes National Seashore into wilderness. Uh, so then we were kind of curious where it stood at that point. So uh, our friend Teresa did a quick Google search on her phone, and she's like, oh, oh my gosh, this just came down like a minute ago on my phone. It says uh, that they got a reprieve, and they're able to stay open during the legal proceedings. Okay. I thought, well, that's fantastic. It's time for us to have Kevin Lunny, the owner of Drake's Bay Oyster Farm, back on the show to give us a little update and find out his elation, at least temporary elation, over this uh, ruling. Kevin, welcome back to Eat, Drink, Explore. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, so you must have, you were probably louder than we were when we read that. <laughs> we, we were like, wow, <laughs> this is great. Uh, because you were you were within hours of shutting down, were you not? That is correct. And, you know, it was, uh, it was a very interesting moment because things were getting pretty um, difficult out at the farm with the, you know, there are 30 families that are out there and depend on this job yeah. and the people that were coming to the farm um be- beginning to really start letting it sink in wait a minute this hundred year old resource that is part of our community could actually be gone it was getting so this is a it's great that the uh, ninth circuit court of appeals um recognized the errors in the government's arguments and the error in uh and uh, Judge Gonzalez Rogers' first um, ruling that said uh, we had to get out. Yeah, so I imagine the phone is ringing off the hook for you guys uh, asking what the situation is. And then, like you said, it's not just you and your son and daughter you know, running this operation. You have many, many families involved, and... W- and those people have to make plans too. They have rents to pay. They have, you know, uh, children in schools and such. Uh, so, you know, it's hard to keep all of those people on the payroll and without them looking for other jobs because right now they don't know what's going to happen. That's exactly right. And that, and it's it's a bittersweet. It's beautiful in one sense and difficult in another because all our staff realizes that um, their job could end. Um, because the government wants to evict them. And they want to evict them out of their homes, too, because a lot of these people live at the farm, and they're going to lose their homes. Mm. And, a lot of, and these families, many of these families have been there and raised their children with our children. They go to the same schools, the same churches. Um, this is going to be a, a, an immense blow to our coastal community to lose um, this resource. But um, so it is, it, it really is, wonderful to think that uh, the courts might just give us a break here. The problem is it may uh, be given right back to the interior, and uh, we're not so sure they're going to make the proper decision if they do it again. So, Kevin, right now you have sort of a reprieve, but do you have any idea on the time frame for when a final decision might be made so you can all kind of let go of your collective breath that you're holding? Sure. Um Here's where we stand. Um, we're so fortunate to have really great people come to our side. The community is amazing. It's just about 90% of the North Bay wants the oyster farm to remain. It's a very small group of uh, activists. They're wilderness activists. We, they, aren't even, they aren't even environmentalists. They're actually embarrassing the environmentalists. But um, so th- their, their push is to to get rid of us. The timing is um, we've gotten this temporary kind of an emergency injunction to hold the, to allow the farm to continue until mid-May. Mid-May we go back to the Ninth Circuit in San Francisco and argue for the preliminary injunction and then that, at that point we would be able to, if we are awarded uh, the injunction, we would be able to stay there through the pendency of the lawsuit. And as I say, we're so lucky to have um, these amazing attorneys from these firms that have come to our defense, all pro bono, because there's no way we could do this. And and these are really experts, and that's why we're um, making some headway, because the government has is throwing an enormous amount of money at trying to get us out. So without their help, we'd be toast. 
just seems so odd to me <laughs> that this right. is even taking place. Let's talk a little bit about the ecology of farming oysters and why it is actually beneficial to the estuary there. Well, that's really, you know, my history is in local food and sustainability. Um, I'm on the board of Marin Organic and the Agricultural Institute of Marin. We do the Marin Farmers Markets. Um, we have the first certified organic beef herd in Marin. So I'm, I'm really uh, taken by how can we produce food with the least impact to the environment. And frankly, uh, oyster farming, shellfish farming is the best example of that that we have really anywhere. Because we produce this protein with no feed, no fertilizers, there's no um, chemical use whatsoever. And, and as you say, they provide ecosystem services while they're out growing in the estuaries. So they're filtering water, they're reducing turbidity so it's clearer, so sunlight makes through, subaquatic vegetation does better, they provide three-dimensional habitat, and they actually convert what would otherwise be pollutants like nitrogen and phosphorus into this fabulous healthy protein that we remove from the ocean system. So it's probably one of the best choices in the world for, um, for protein and even... Uh, even the Monterey Bay Aquarium agrees it's the super green food. Mm -hmm. So, Kevin, it's doing all of these positive things for the ecosystem there. I'm curious to know what would be entailed if they decide to dismantle the farm, move everyone out. What What's the um, side effect of then dismantling or removing? Do they get rid of people's homes, the infrastructure? What happens with the removal of the farm? Well, I think that's a great question, and not enough people are thinking about that because... Mm -hmm. Our government spends millions and millions of dollars all over the nation to plant shellfish and to encourage and fund um, creation of shellfish aquaculture because that's what we want in our estuaries. This will be the first incident of the government ever removing. See, they're, by kicking us out, we're forced to pull out of the water and kill and put in the landfill about 20 million oysters, 19 or 20 million oysters and all the clams as well, and the, the impact that may have, the effect to remove all those filter feeders overnight from an estuary that is extremely healthy, it's doing, it's just, it's a phenomenal bay, it's got the best water quality of any bay or estuary uh, for shellfish growing in the, in the state. So, first of all, we don't know what that effect's going to be, but on land, they, we expect that they'll just tear out all the homes and pretend they weren't there. Mm -hmm. You certainly have the public support on your side, uh, and it seems like you have the uh, support of the media in the Bay Area as well. Is that your sense? Well, I think the more people learn, the, uh, the media has been extremely helpful because to get the word out, um, people do begin to support more and more. The facts are really on the side of this local food source, this historic um, operation, and to remove it to create um, what, they're, what they want to call wilderness really won't add to the um, ecology. There's, there's, there's nothing to gain. This is a perfect example of a working landscape, you know, a, a collaborative conservation. And so it's, uh, as people learn, media helps because people start to understand, then they start saying, wait a minute, that's not what I heard. That's not what they told me, because the activists that got out ahead on this issue and created a spin that, um, oh, it's hurting the harbor seals, it's, ter it's terrible on the eelgrass, ruining sediments. Um, oh, this was always supposed to be wilderness. Everybody knew in 40 years it would be. Well, none of those things are true. They've all been disproven, and so... That's why there's more and more support, because support, the support's coming with good information. It's 944 right now. Kevin, if you don't mind holding on during this commercial break, I have a couple of questions to ask you regarding what people can do to help. And also, I want to clarify for people that, uh, which we did the last time we had you on the show, but I think it's worth repeating, uh, the lease that you originally signed and the agreement that you had with the Department of the Interior. Sure. We're speaking with Kevin Lunny. He's the owner of Drake's Bay Oyster Farm there at Point Reyes National Seashore. I'm your host, Randall White, joined by Patty Pyburn. You're listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network. We're back in just a moment.
California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California, L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com, and enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. C-A-L-U-V.com. The California Love business recommendation tool. Hey, Farmer's Market fans, listen up, because we're launching a new show just for you. Join the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network each Thursday evening from 5.30 to 6 for a healthy dose of recipe sharing and food news. We broadcast our show live from the historic downtown San Luis Obispo Farmer's Market, but the information shared is designed for anyone who has a love of fresh, seasonal produce and locally made artisan treats. So whether your favorite market is local Located at San Francisco's Ferry Plaza in downtown Santa Monica, or if you're simply a member of a CSA, you'll love our weekly Market Fresh, available live each Thursday evening at eatdrinkexplore.com. And if you missed the show, follow our updates on Facebook and Twitter for links to the recipes shared, video from the show, and other great information. Eat, Drink, Explore Radio's Market Fresh, helping perfect your California flavor. Hi, this is Rick Moranis. You know, some people are more careful about what they feed their cars than what they feed their bodies. They know that the wrong fuel can hurt a car's performance and maybe ruin the engine. But the wrong food can have the same effect on your health. Too much fat, too many calories, and too little of what's good for you can affect how well you feel and even lead to serious illness. So eat right. It'll help you keep running smooth. For more information, visit the Will Rogers Institute at wrinstitute.org or call toll-free 877-957-7575 and find us on Facebook and Twitter. Wayne Brady for the Will Rogers Institute. Hey, folks, I've got something that will truly revolutionize your life. It's called exercise. It will get you from here to there, allow you to spend time with your family and meet new people, cut inches from your waistline, and improve the quality of your life, even help improve your self-image. Sexy. So when you've got to choose between moving around or lying on the couch, choose exercise. You won't be sorry. For your free booklet, visit wrinstitute.org or call toll-free 877-957-7575 and find us on Facebook and Twitter. California business owners, entrepreneurs, farmers, authors, and other professionals, this message is for you. We're looking to highlight those of you who give back to the community, care about the environment, and have the health of our state as part of your business model or focus. Our new California Love website is in the beta testing phase. So during the next few months, we're offering free listings to qualified people or business entities. It's a win-win situation. You help populate our site with quality, locally owned California companies, and we help direct customers to your business or product. Simply head over to caluv.com. That's C-A as in California, L-U-V as in a cute way to spell love.com, and enter the information for your business today. Why wouldn't you? It's easy and it's free. caluv.com, the California Love Business Recommendation Tool. everyone to the final segment here on Eat Drink Explore Radio 949 the time and we'll wrap things up with a part two of our interview with Drake's Bay Oyster Farm owner Kevin Lunny who's been updating us on their situation here on this uh, Sunday morning. Good morning Kevin. Uh, We were hearing all about your um, the troubles that your oyster farm is going through and all the public support. So you got the farm initially, took over the lease. What What's the situation with your agreement with the uh, Department of Interior? Okay, originally when we took over? Yeah. Okay, um, our neighbors were the Johnsons, and they were the uh, 
farmers before us, our ranch is next door, and our uh, from our house we overlook the bay and we overlook the the oyster beds at low tide from looking out our window. And so we've always had that connection. And in 2004, we began to help the Johnsons do some cleanup that they needed to to meet some regulatory requirements. And uh, that's when we started talking about um, becoming the new oyster farmers there. And so we started off by talking to the Seashore Administration, so the National Park Service uh, superintendent of the Seashore, and... uh, talked about what the process was. Now, the, the Park Service had the first right of refusal. They could have just purchased the last years of the, the agreement, and if they wanted to close it, just close it. They elected to encourage us to go ahead and get involved, which they did. And so what we did is we purchased that agreement. That agreement um, went from 1972 to 2012 and expired on November 30th, 2012. So you hear a lot of people say, well, they knew it was 40 years, and they shouldn't be surprised. Well, that agreement is also has a clause that's explicitly renewable. We talked about the renewal clause, and we talked about the possibilities. We knew it was never an absolute right of renewal, but it was certainly possible. And recognized even in the Wilderness Act in 1976, when the Interior Department and the Park Service did their environmental impact statement for the wilderness, Congress, or, or, or the Interior and Congress, agreed that Drake's Estero could not be full wilderness because the state of California has the right to renew shellfish leases indefinitely. That's their words. Oh. And so that was in 76 with the Wilderness Act. No one ever talked about the oyster farm leaving. So it was made potential wilderness and not wilderness. Um, so this is a brand new... So after we took over... Um, and we did about three hundred thousand dollars worth of cleanup to bring this back into operation and and uh, let it be the you know the wonderful place it is. Um, then the Park Service and the even in court, the Park Service and the the government attorneys have uh, you know admitted that it was after we took over that they handed us a piece of paper that says, "Oh, we're not going to renew. We have a solicitor's opinion." Well, the solicitor's opinion's wrong. They can renew. They just decided they didn't want to. So that's where all the conflict has come. So you'll hear our opponents saying, oh, a deal's a deal, and it was 40 years, and they should have known it. Well, they weren't there. We were encouraged. We actually had discussions about renewing past 2012, and then those agreements fell apart as, you know, early on in our existence here. And that was the first angle that I read when I was uh, reading about what was happening to you. The very first angle that I read was that you had signed a lease that was expiring, and I thought, oh, yeah, well, you know, that's what you get. You it know, happens, right? But it, that's why I was so happy to be educated <coughs> on the other side of the it. The circumstances. The circumstances. Mm-hmm. I grew up going to Johnson's Oyster Farm uh, okay. with my dad. We'd take, and my mom and dad, we took Sunday drives out into mm-hmm. Point Reyes National Seashore from our town in Novato, and uh, just loved the area, and I think it would be a tragedy if this was not there, regardless of my personal memories of it, right. uh, everything that you've laid out, Kevin. Now, tell me, or tell us, I should say, uh, what are your next steps? Your The case is currently being held, or, or heard, rather, by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals in San Francisco? That's correct. And uh, and when is a ruling expected? You might have told Patty this already. Well, we, um, we go in for... Um, in the middle of May, to, and where the judges will hear the preliminary injunction um, arguments, mm-hmm. and if we are given the injunction, that means we can remain open while the lawsuit continues, because the Secretary of the Interior simply um, erred. He misinterpreted the law. So his decision will be um, basically vacated so it can be made again. Yeah. Now, if we lose this injunction, which is a possibility in May, then the government will force us to, into removing all the shellfish, and and then and what which would really what what is called it's irreparable harm. Meaning, if we finish the lawsuit, there's nothing left. Our yeah. staff's already gone. The oysters are all killed. Um, the clams are all killed, and there's nothing to restart. I don't want to. I don't want you to jinx it. But what's your gut feeling on this? <laughs> right? <laughs> but, Do you have a feeling? Yeah. 
Our gut feeling is we have every reason in the world to believe that we're going to be granted this injunction and actually would be successful in the lawsuit because okay. um, the three-judge panel from the Ninth Circuit that gave the uh, emergency injunction have already seen the arguments, and they, the only way they can give uh, an injunction like this is if they believe that we have the likelihood to prevail. Mm-hmm. That's, one of the, that's one of the factors they have to find. And they actually did get it when... The Judge Rogers, the first time around, um, she accepted an argument um, that the government gave, which is essentially we're above the law and above, beyond accountability. The secretary has unfettered discretion, and the courts have no law to apply, and, and so, the, so the judge has nothing to say here. Well, she actually agreed with that. Mm. Now the Ninth Circuit is saying, no, there are many laws that apply, and the balance of the equities tips sharply in the favor of Drake's Bay. So they've sent a signal that we probably will prevail, although we know that anything can happen. Yeah, that's It sounds true. hopeful, though, and with all the public support, that's hopeful as well. Speaking of public support, what can people do, Kevin, to assist in this process? Anything? Um, everything. We don't think that, I mean, we don't know, and we can't expect that the uh, real solutions in the courts, what we can do is correct the errors. They're still huge amount of um, false science that the Park Service has forwarded that's not been corrected. It's still damaging the public record. All those things, some of those things can happen. But the long-term solution, we believe, needs to be we need our elected officials to help. Remember I mentioned California reserved the right to issue these shellfish leases. Our lease is good in California till 2029. And what we need is Governor Brown and Kamala Harris, um, to hear from everybody in the state, say, save this resource. And we need all our federal electeds, um, Diane Feinstein especially. She's been a great friend. I was going to say, you have the senator on your side. Mm-hmm. We know that much. How about uh, Senator Barbara Boxer? She's from Marin. That's right. She needs to hear from everybody and then also your own congressional representative. All right, Kevin Lunny, owner of Drake's Bay Oyster Farm. Get more information and show your support at drakesbayoyster.com. Thank you so much for your return visit and updating us on the situation. We hope to have you back in June with a really positive result. (laughs) Well, thank you. I look forward to that. All right. Thank you for listening, everyone, here to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio network on this Sunday. We'll catch you back here next week. You've been listening to the Eat, Drink, Explore radio program. If you missed any of our segments today, look for them online or through our free Apple and Android apps. Catch you back right here next week.